so I just wanted to continue with our read aloud of the Magic School Bus, um, The Giant Germ, okay? And we are now going to start on chapter three of the story. Chapter three. I told you I always have bad luck, Arnold groaned. And now it's rubbing off on us, said Ralphie to the bus. Everyone, Miss Rizzle instructed. We didn't have to be, be told twice. We all ran for magic, the magic school bus. Pronto! As I scrambled in, a dark shadow fell over us. I looked out the window and saw the gigantic sole of the girl's sneaker right above the bus. No! I cried. I waited for the sneaker to come crashing down on us, but at the last second, the girl paused. Hmm, what's this doing on the ground? She murmured. Everyone cheered as the fourth grader picked up my sandwich and tossed it into her bag. I guess your luck is changing for the better, Arnold, I said. Boy, was I wrong. A few minutes later, we all bounced around inside the magic school bus as the giant fourth grader emptied the scrap food from her bag into the compost bin. Yuck, said Phoebe. She pointed at the bits of bread, orange peel, and dead leaves that were crammed against the windows of the bus. We were never thrown in with the trash at my old school. This might look like trash to you, said the frizz. But to microbes, it's a feast. You mean microbes are eating the food in this compost bin the same way they were eating my bread? A note from Carlos. The dirt on compost by Carlos. Compost is a mixture of leaves, vegetables, and other matter that is in the process of decaying. Once the material is completely de decomposed, it becomes the soft, dark, non-rocky part of the soil, which is called hummus. Hummus is full of rich nutrients for growing plants. That's right. Take a look, Miss Rizzle touched a button on the dashboard and the bus got a little bigger. We were still pretty small, but now we could see a little farther over the tops of fungi like the ones on my bread. It's micromania out here, Arnold said. He wasn't kidding either. All around us were colonies of fungi and plenty of other microbes too. We saw some of the same kinds of balls, rods, and spirals. Only here, millions of each kind were all piled together. Those are bacteria, Miss Frizzle told us, just like fungi. They need to be around plant or animal matter that they can use for food. Hundreds of different kinds of microbes are at work here, producing enzymes that break down the old food and plants into food that microbes can absorb. That means microbes are making big changes to their environment. DA added. After the enzymes do their work, all this stuff turns into hummus and carbon dioxide gas. Miss Rizzle steered the magic school bus across the food, leaves, and branches in the compost bin. It was like a gigantic jungle. Microbes were plastered all over everything. Fungi and bacteria were producing enzymes that made old food and leaves and branches decay. As everything rotted, we could see carbon dioxide gas bubble up into the air. Decomposition is a gas by Keisha. When microbes break down food, scraps, plants, and animals, it's called decomposition. When materials decompose, the process produces carbon dioxide gas that becomes part of the air we breathe. Carbon dioxide is what makes the bubbles in carbonated drinks and the holes in the bread. The stuff that's left over, hummus, doesn't, have, doesn't take up nearly as much space as the food scraps did before they were broken down. So a lot of compost makes a little soil. But that wasn't all. We could also see waves of heat rising off the compost. Why, why is it so hot here? Ralphie asked, wiping his brow. 
I'm sweating. It takes a lot of energy to turn all this scrap food and grass and leaves into fresh earth and carbon dioxide gas, Miss Rizzle explained. These microbes are working so hard they actually make the compost heat up. Miss Rizzle turned the wheel and the, the bus began to burrow into the food and leaves. Near the top, the food scraps and plants hadn't changed very much, but farther down, it all just looked like brown mush. Yeehaw! The frizz cried as the bus slid around on the stuff. So here is Ralphie and the other two girls. So Keisha and um, Phoebe, they're on the bus. You call this fun? Phoebe asked. She was clutching the seat in front of her. According to my research, microbes have been at work long, longer down here, DA said. The food and branches and stuff have already totally broken down to fresh hummus. So when the microbes break down food like my bread, it is a good thing, I said. Microbes are the best waste management program on the planet, said Miss Frizzle. Without them, old food and plants and animals would all just pile up. But with microbes, they break down to hummus. It's a rotten job, said Carlos. Luckily, microbes are very good at it. We all groaned, Carlos. Microbes are always changing their environment because that's how they get the food they need to grow and make more of themselves, Miss Frizzle went on. Sure, a few microbes do damage when they grow inside people or on plants, but many, many more microbes do good. From the desk of Miss Frizzle, microbe against microbe. Some microbes actually eat other kinds of microbes that can make plants or animals sick. Life-saving medic medicines called antibiotics are made from bacteria and fungi. Those antibiotics kill disease, causing bacteria so people can get well. According to my book, some bacteria actually clean up toxic waste, DA said. They use poisons like oil, pesticides, and menth menthine gas for food and break them down into simpler materials that don't hurt the environment. Wow, I said, hearing so many good things about microbes was making me feel lucky to have those microscopic creatures around. What about that microbe over there? Carlos asked. What's it doing? He pointed to a long, hairy-looking creature that was headed our way. That is a kind of protozoa, Miss Frizzle said. A protozoa, zoan, is often from the other microbes we've seen. Unlike fungi and bacteria, a protozoan can swallow its food without breaking it down into simpler materials first. Um, does anyone else have the feeling that protozoans thinks we're a snack? Protozoan looked like it was crawling on its tiny hairs as it came closer to the magic school bus. Fortunately, we were quicker than it was. Miss Frizzle hit the gas and we were out of there in a flash, faster than a speeding microbe. Carlos said as the bus zoomed upward, we were back at the top of the compost bin in no time. Phew, I said. Lucky was on. Luck was on our side this time. I should have known it was too good to last. A loud buzzing sound made me look up. Uh-oh, I said, Miss Riz. I said, flies! Dozens of flies swarmed overhead. We were so small that their boggling, bulging eyes seemed enormous. The hairy black legs had microbes stuck all over them. Every time one of those flies buzzed toward us, my stomach did a flip. All of a sudden, a fly landed with its leg on top of the magic school bus and began to eat from the compost. I guess microbes aren't the only creatures like that likes to chow down on leftovers, Tim said. Gross, said Arnold. But that wasn't nearly as gross as what happened when the fly flew off. We're stuck to the fly's foot, Phoebe cried. As the fly buzzed up into the air, the magic school bus, with all of us inside, went with it. 
So here's a little dialogue. We never flew with the flies at my old school. So here's a picture. And that concludes for chapter three. Um, in my next video, I will be continuing on into chapter four of the story. Um, I want you guys to uh, go ahead and share with your parents or brother or sister or maybe even a stuffed animal you have at home about what you like so far in this story. Uh, what's your favorite part? Tell them what's going on. Retell the story to them of what's going on so far in the story. Um, and I hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. And I will see you guys in the next video for chapter four. Take care.